Hey guys, my name is Howard Wimshurst. I am a freelance animator and artist, filmmaker. Today I want to give you some advice for how to get animation commissions or art commissions. I get a lot of questions, it's the same question again and again. How do I make clients interested in what I have to, to sell in the service that I provide? This is the advice I wish I knew back when I was starting. I'm gonna boil this down into three or maybe four big steps you can do. This captures the overall strategy of this method. Number one, post your work online. If you have no clients coming to you, you need to create work to advertise yourself. Number two is document your process. You can talk about how you made something and that's going to be an advertisement for your services themselves. People are gonna realize, wow, this guy knows what he's talking about. This guy has a proven process, a proven way to get from A to B when it comes to something creative. Number three is make yourself available for work. So advertise that. Every video that you create or every post that you create on social media should have a link to your portfolio, a link to where someone can easily hire you. Your email address should be easy to find. You should just make it incredibly easy for someone if they get the idea, hey, I could hire this guy, they can do it without any roadblocks, without any difficulty. Number four is don't chase clients. Never chase a client. I will never ever chase a client ever again. I do not apply to anything. People apply to me. <laughs> you know, it's the other way around now. People will email me. If they want to email me and offer to pay me to, to make animations and artwork for them, then they can do that. They can contact me. The thing is, if you send a cold email, that is the equivalent to a cold call. But if you send a cold email and ask them if they are interested in animation, the chances of that prospect client being interested in hiring you for an animation is like really slim. <laughs> it's really slim. It's the, the likelihood is that they just don't need animation at that point in time. If you are responding to someone who's already sent the first email and they say, hey, I'd really like to hire you for an animation, there's a 100% certainty there that the client is interested in working with you. You know that for a fact. And now it's just a, a, a case of whether you're the right fit for the client uh, determining that with information like price and deadlines. The other big reason I don't chase clients is because of opportunity cost. So if you're sending cold emails or DMing potential leads on social media, you're spending all that time not making art or animations, you're not improving your craft. Um, so you should be spending the minimum amount of time possible in writing emails and DMs and you should spend the maximum amount of time possible animating. And I think the way you do that is not by chasing down leads only to be told no a hundred times. I mean, that might sound very romantic. It's not hard work, it's just um, being inefficient. To cut to the chase and to have the, the most suitable clients find you, uh, it's just a much better use of your time and you can spend a lot more time drawing, a lot more time learning on the job. Good news! The official prototype Animator Guild masks arrived in the mail this week and I will definitely be wearing these when I'm out and about. They are so much cooler than wearing a boring white mask and they're reusable as well. This wings design I think has turned out the best because the red is really vivid and it just looks really cool. It's got the iconic wings. With the fracture design, it was a bit of a shame because the darker patterns haven't really shown up in the print that much. It still looks really cool, but I will need to bump up the levels in the darker parts of the pattern. The storm design turned out really well too. I'll be wearing this one a lot. And the dark design I'll wear when there's a lot going on with my outfit and I just want something more subtle. Uh, these have been really fun to design though. You can buy one of these masks on my store which will be linked down below. They ship internationally, so uh, treat yourself to something and stay safe in style. I've been a work for hire freelance animator 
And I've also been a client. I've also hired animators to do animation work. So I have both perspectives of this. I have an understanding of what the client is feeling and I have an understanding of what the freelancer is feeling. The client has no way of knowing if you are going to see this project through, if you're going to complete it, if you don't have evidence of that already. The client wants to see proof that you are someone who follows through on what they say they're going to do. Because the last thing the client wants is for the freelancer to just get halfway through the project and say, actually, you know what, I've, I'm going to go off and do something else and just leave them with, with nothing, with nothing that they can work with. That is the main fear of the client. And the only way you really can prove yourself is to create animations of your own. Um, no one's going to give you a chance at this if you just say you can do it, but you have no proof of that. You also define the type of work people are going to ask you for by what you've already done. Clients only buy what you've already made. It's a bit annoying, but it's the reality. You know, if you have made fight scene animations in the past, prospect clients are going to ask you to make more fight scene animations. If you've made explainer videos in the past, clients are going to ask you to make explainer videos. It's very rare that a client will look at your artwork or look at your animation and use their imagination to say well maybe that artist can do this type of work as well I don't know I'm going to roll the dice on this it's unlikely that they're going to do that niches this is a pretty interesting idea this could be quite helpful to you creating animations which have niche appeal to a specific type of market instead of just saying I make 2d animations instead of that you could say I make science explainer videos to explain abstract scientific concepts or I create artistic music videos with a hand-drawn bespoke touch or maybe your specialty could be making video game parodies. These are more specific than just I make 2D animations. So if someone is looking for that specific thing they're much more likely to hire a specialist rather than a generalist. So back when I was starting, this was a big error I made. I went in the opposite direction. I was really spread out and unfocused. In my portfolio, I would offer 2D animation, but then I'd also offer graphic design, video editing, color grading, <laughs> film scoring, like going way outside of my core competence to things I just dabbled in. And that was a big mistake. Once I reined that in into the thing I was the best at, that was much better, that was much more appealing in the eyes of a client. And it was much better for me as well because I could focus on developing expertise, deep expertise in a specific thing. These niches are not equal either. There are niches that have deep pockets and there are niches that have very shallow pockets. So what do I mean by that? There, some of these niches are like very affluent. For example, if you can somehow create a video service for real estate um, and, and real estate investing, anything to do with selling houses, buying and selling houses, they've got deep pockets. Like they are more affluent. So these niches are not equal music video as a niche i mean it's really creative work it's really fun to work on these music videos but music videos are three and a half minutes on average of uh, high quality animation that comes with a large price tag if the band or music artist is able to pay that price tag that's great i mean work for them because it's really creative work but unless they're ranked in the charts somewhere, they're probably not raking in that much. That's a, that's a generalization, of course, but uh, that's something to consider. If you're going after a specific niche, not all of these niches are equal financially. And if you have a very unique style, if you go for a specific type of style, that will also be a differentiator for you. For example, Mika Buzan, he makes this very crazy, intense, psychedelic, animation 
uh, as a style. And people who want that really trippy psychedelic style, they know that he's best at that. So your own drawing style, when you foster that style and you really lean into that style, uh, that will also create like a niche in itself. You'll become like a category of one. Now, you might be thinking with, well, that's easy for you to say, Howard. You have a base of subscribers. There are people who watch your videos already. Um, that must make it easy for you. What about someone who's starting from scratch with no following and they're not getting any clients emailing them. There's no show of interest yet. What do I say to that person? And that is an indication that you're not ready that you haven't been investing in your social media and your personal branding and your marketing. So you need to work on that before you can start earning with freelancing. Now, of course, the temptation here is to not market yourself. The temptation is to go onto a website like Upwork or Fiverr, one of these freelance websites, and to just put yourself in the search rankings there and put yourself out there as like a commoditized service. Please don't waste your time. <laughs> My experience with those websites has been not good. <laughs> I think it's a colossal waste of time. There's a very good chance you're gonna be undercut by people who are willing to work for cheaper. It's not really the best way to grow as a business. If no one has contacted you yet, keep making original animations keep documenting your process, make those YouTube videos, make those Instagram stories or however it is you, you do that. For me personally, my favorite platform for this is YouTube, but yours might be Instagram, yours might be Vimeo. Uh, use the one that you're most comfortable with and put out content. Advertise yourself. These are like, they are advertisements for your own service, but you can make them entertaining, you can make them engaging. And if you want an example of this, you can have a look at this behind the scenes video that I made for Pat Greenall's commission. This was like a 10 second clip of animation, like really small piece of animation. And I milked that, I made like, it was probably like a 15 minute video that I made just on how I made it, you know, the challenges that I overcame to make it, using these new softwares, using Dane Interpolation AI, sounded really fancy, sounded really impressive. And I've gotten commission offers from that video. It was from the video that I made about how I made that commission. That's what pulled in like 200,000 views. And some of those viewers, some of those people watching had that idea of like, hey, this guy has made this animation. Uh, he's been hired to make this animation. Maybe he can do the same for me. Looked in the description of the video and look what comes up. There's my email address or there's my website portfolio with my email address on it. It's clear to see. And I get, I get a lot, a lot of commission offers just from doing that, just from putting a video out there, letting it be seen by people. I'll try and make the video as entertaining as I can. It's a pretty simple formula. Basically what you have is you have the, the marketing and stuff. This is, this is your YouTube, this is your social media profile or whatever. This is your portfolio and your service as a freelance animator. These two, they help each other. They are stronger together when they help each other. The freelancing, the way this helps my social media is it increases my credibility. It's like, you can trust what I have to say because I'm actually out there in the field testing the concepts that I talk about on my YouTube channel. And then this strengthens that because this is an advertisement for my freelance service. There's a phrase I always say in my head, which is, they can't hire you if they don't know you exist. <laughs> You could be like the best animator in the world, but if the client has no idea that you exist, that you sell your services, then the client cannot hire you. It's, it's not possible for the client to hire you. And I also know that a lot of uh, people are quite unwilling to step into the spotlight. You know, they want to stay behind the scenes. They want to behind the screen, but not show that they are the ones that made it. What I would say is if, if you look in, related fields, things like cooking. There are probably really good chefs that just stay in the kitchen and do not show themselves. There are like Michelin star chefs who are 
the best in the world, but no one knows about them. And they have pretty good success, they, they have a moderate level of success, but the most successful chefs, the ones who get all these amazing brand deals and and get paid the highest salaries, or, or not even salaries, are like running businesses, they are the ones who were willing to step in front of the spotlight. Uh, chefs like Gordon Ramsay or Nigella Lawson, I believe her name is. I don't know, I, I don't really care about cooking. <laughs> and there are also examples of where you don't need to actually go on camera like what I'm doing. Resh Anims is a good example of this. Resh has a really good video on how they made Crimson Alpine, the short film. And it was just text on screen, music, behind the scenes footage, but Resh didn't have to go onto camera. So there are ways of navigating around that if you really don't want to go on camera like like what I'm doing. I, I would understand that. It's not for everyone. There is also this thing about building momentum. If you are starting a social media profile from scratch, you've got to build momentum and this can be really difficult. Now, I don't really want to endorse spamming, but... That is what I did in the beginning to get my channel started. I would like, so when I'd made a video, I would copy the share link and I would share it across every forum I could find. Like every forum on the internet that was related to animation, I would be sharing my own video. And that was just like, if you think about like a car that needs to be pushed to start, you know, you've got to give it that first push before it can uh, start chugging away and like the, uh, again, I, I don't know much about cars. <laughs> That's basically what you might need to do with your social media profile. There's also this myth out there that YouTube is too saturated and it's all too saturated and there's no point of making a channel or a social media profile if you haven't already. And uh, I do not think that's true. Of course, you still have to get behind that car and push it though, that's the thing. You have to build up that momentum. But if you make quality videos, if you make quality videos and you're willing to adapt to the platform that you're using to make it pleasing to, to them, I think you have uh, a good chance of, um, of building a, a, an organic following. Existing clients. This is really important to talk about. Among freelancers, there's an obsession over getting new clients. You know, what are you doing to attract new clients? And that's good, that's important and everything. But another really key aspect of this is how you're treating your existing clients. Because some of the best advertising you can do for your services is just having a really happy client. Because if you make your client really happy, if you go above and beyond for your client, that client is going to talk about you. That client is going to recommend you to their friends. When asked about how that collaboration went, the client will just have positive things to say. And word of mouth is like the strongest, it's like the strongest factor. If someone is recommended something from their friend, they are so likely to, to do it themselves. Um, it, it's the most compelling form of advertising, it's just word of mouth. So the formula is word of mouth, social media presence, and building niche authority. So within a very specific thing, you wanna be like the go-to guy for that. Those three are so important. On the end of each of these, I gotta say, do not chase clients. Do not contact clients if they haven't contacted you. Obviously respond to clients, but that's not chasing a client, that's responding to someone who's chasing you. Do not chase clients. Do not chase clients. <laughs> I wanna talk about navigating the potential traps you might find in this when you're getting started. So one of the biggest traps is not having a fallback option. And this removes any negotiating leverage you have. So if you find that you really need the money for next month's rent and the client says, we're actually gonna pay you half of what you wanted. Well, if you need the money for rent, you have to take that job, your hands are tied. That's a terrible position to be in and you never want to be in that position as an artist. You could maybe be in that position as someone else, but for art, no. <laughs> it's too easy to get sucked into that. And so the thing you need to do for that is have a fallback option. You need a side hustle or something, which means that you can just walk away from that, that client. 
Um, that's very important. Uh, so maybe that, I'm, I don't know, maybe that side hustle is like driving Uber or something, but it has to be something that you can just reliably do if you need to make money until you have like this momentum going. And that's the other thing with like being ready. If you're not getting interest from clients, and you're not getting interest from people in general, not just like clients, but just people in general. If people do not really uh, like what they're seeing with, the, with your artwork yet, then you need to have that patience and restraint to be able to hold back from chasing after commissions and working on your art fundamentals and actually building something, building a project that you're actually proud of. During that time, you're not going to be making commission money from freelancing because you'll just be working like for yourself. But that's very important because the more skilled you become, the more you build up your skills and your experience, the higher you can charge and the more you can get paid. <laughs> Eventually, once you get clients, once you start working on these commission projects, you'll be able to learn on the job, which is great because it's basically like being paid to learn. If a client contacts you with a really ambitious project that you're a little bit uncomfortable with, you're a bit like, ooh, that's gonna be tricky. Great, that's really good, because it's pushing you out of your comfort zone. You're basically learning while getting paid. You can see how that's just gonna build you up and up and up and up. So, what if no one is contacting you for a commission? That's probably one of two things. Number one, your skills are not yet desirable. People might like your artwork, but they might not yet want to pay money for you to do it for them. And number two is that maybe you are desirable, but people just don't know about you. So you have to build awareness that you are out here doing commissions. I think probably everyone online who knows me is aware that I'm a freelance animator. Like I say it everywhere. <laughs> and when they need an animation made, they think of me. Now, I have only scratched the surface of this topic, and this topic is wide and it is deep. I have so much information I want to give you on this. I mean, talking about negotiating, getting into the numbers and the nitty gritty, setting a rate that you can go by, how to calculate how much you're worth, setting like timelines and things, how to talk to the clients, um, literally like the emails I will send to the client back and forth, how I respond to them, how I treat the client, little things you can do to go above and beyond with your client relationship. Once you have the money, how do you handle that money? Do you, how do you invest the money? You can invest that money that you earn so that it just grows by itself. Oh wow, I have so much I wanna talk about when it comes to the business of freelance animation. It's so exciting. I am crazy about this topic and I just want to tell you all of it but it's gonna take time it's also gonna take a lot of time and commitment on your part for you to take it in this is like a business school for animators it's never been done before to my knowledge and it's not completely ready yet we've got some really exciting things and I want to keep you updated on that but I also want to know if you're interested. I've made a link down below. It will take you to a page of my website. You can basically just write your name and email address in there and just say that you're interested. You're also able to ask me a question related to the business of animation when you just tell me that you're interested. You're able to ask a question and I will answer that in the course. I will go through each of these questions. Obviously, if there's like repeated questions, I'll put them all into one question, but I will answer every question within the course. I'm so excited about it. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.